Holy One of God sets out for a lonely place, a dark place, before dawn has broken in the world, before the first lights have started to rise, before the birds sang out their dawn chorus. The Holy One of God sought a quiet place, a lonely place, a wilderness place, to stop and pray with God. I invite you to come into this lonely place, this wilderness place, this dark place, to spend time with the holy, to spend time with the holy, to hear the words of scripture, to pray from your heart, to rest in the presence of God. Our souls wait in silence for the Lord. Welcome to worship. No matter who you are, no matter what your dark or lonely place is, no matter whether you're in the wilderness or sitting on your couch, you are welcome here. You're welcome to enter the holy. What a friend we have in Jesus. We continue our journey with the Holy through the Gospel of Mark. This week we are with Jesus after he has left Simon Peter's house. In the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. I don't know about you, but since last March, I've spent a lot of time awake in the dark of the morning. In that three, four, and five o'clock hour where you are awake because your mind can't help spinning with all the anxiety and things we have to be fearful of. The anxiety that one of us will catch COVID or that one of our family members or friends will get sick the fear that that last trip to the grocery store is the one that makes you ill. And so you've been waking up in those dark hours of the early morning before you normally wake up. 
and your head is spinning, spinning with all of the grief and trauma and fear that is, has come from our central government, our government that seems to be so dysfunctional that they can't do what is right for people. And so your head is spinning in those early morning hours, spinning, wondering what the next news to drop will be and how horrible it will be for some group of people. Those early morning hours have been a place of loneliness, a wilderness place for most of us this year. That time, that three, four, five o'clock in the morning before the first light has come out when it's still very dark, when the birds haven't started their dawn chorus yet. And in those early morning hours, when you're awake and your head is spinning, what do you do? In our scripture today, it says that the Holy One of God got up. Got up while it was still very dark in the early morning. He got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. What do you do if you're the Holy One of God and you've come into town and now you are surrounded by need? You are surrounded by people who are hurt and hurting. You are surrounded by people who need your touch and your word. You are surrounded by all of the pain and sorrow and grief. You are surrounded by those glimmers of hope. What do you do if you've had the fullest day you've ever had in your life? It begins with you walking along the shore and calling you to you friends to join you on the journey with the Holy. And then you enter into a church. You read from the scrolls of the Holy and you start speaking about the Word of God. And people are amazed by what you do, and then you encounter someone who needs to be released from the evil that is within them, who needs to be freed from the pain that they have been struggling with. And when you think your day is over and you're heading home for the evening meal to your friend's house, you walk in the door and you find that there's more need, there's more pain, there's more healing that needs to take place, and so more energy is drawn from you. What do you do if you're the Holy One of God? And wherever you go, you are now surrounded with those cries for help, those cries for the Holy to come near and rescue us, to release us from this oppression and pain. What do you do if you're the Holy One of God? Your mind must be spinning, right? If you're Jesus, you rise very early and go to a lonely, isolated, desolate place. You go to a desert place, a wilderness place. You go to that place where you first encountered God, where God surrounded you with those angels and those challenges, where God lifted you through that struggle to figure out who you are. You go back to that desert place, to that wilderness spot, to that lonely, isolated place, and you pray. And after that day he had had of preaching and teaching and healing, setting evil free and calling followers, he needed to recharge. He needed to reconnect with the holy, to be with God. The need surrounding him was so overwhelming, and he needed that time alone, that time in prayer to reconnect, to reaffirm who he was, to re-understand what his call was, 
He needed that time alone with God to rest, to still all the thoughts in his head. He needed that time with the holy in prayer. And yet he can't escape. He can't even escape there in that moment where he has found an isolated, lonely, desolate place in the wilderness because it says Simon and his companions are hunting him. Not even searching for him. Not even wondering where he is and looking around for him. No, they were hunting him. Hunting him. Meaning that they, their need was so strong that they weren't going to let the Holy One of God get away. Their need and desire for what he could do and what he could bring and what he could share was so great that they hunted him down. They were chasing after him. And when they got to him, they said, or Simon said, everyone is looking for you. But we know according to the text, it isn't everyone. It's Simon. Simon, who has been searching and hunting and looking for him. Simon, who has a need, but he puts it off of himself. He makes it into a bigger collective they, a collective we that needs Jesus. They sought him out. They sought out the Holy One of Jesus to bring him their anxiety and the needs of the people around them, the crowd that has gathered for him. They want their anxiety to become Jesus' priority. They want their anxiety to be the focus of what Jesus does. And Jesus, who has just spent time in prayers, knows what he has to do. Jesus does not take on their anxiety. He spent time in prayer and knows, knows his call, his mission. And he tells them that they're going to move on to the next town to preach the next good word, the good news of God's kingdom coming among them. The good news of the dawning of the kingdom of love. They are going to move to the next town where they will heal and free the oppressed. They will move to the next town where they will confront evil and chase it out. They will move to the next town where they will speak of God's love. Do you let anxiety of others draw you away? Draw you in? Do you allow the anxiety of others to sidetrack you, to stop you in your place, to get you anxious so that you do wake up before the dawn chorus and worry? Jesus on this journey of faith, on this mission with the holy, will be interrupted by the need. And he will often and always stop, even when he is interrupted. But he shows us that it's okay to say no to the anxiety of others in order to continue to work at building God's dawning kingdom of love. Jesus isn't drawn into that anxiety, that anonymous desire that people present him to help. Jesus knows because he spent time with God. He has prayed and figured out what his call is. And he continues the journey with the holy. Jesus in this scripture passage helps us to see what to do in those early morning hours when we don't know why it is we're now awake and yet the world doesn't begin moving for three, four, five hours. 
Jesus shows us that one of the things we can do in those early morning dawn hours when our minds are anxious and our body is alert is to pray. To stop and center ourselves and to pray. To pray. To invite the Holy One of God to be with you there in the darkness, in the isolation, in the loneliness. To invite the Holy One of God to share. To share with you that space. To share with you that place. To invite the Holy One into the darkness, into the isolation, into the loneliness. To pray. In the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. I invite you to close your eyes and to breathe deep. And I want those words written about Jesus to be on your breath. Then he prayed. Then he prayed. Then he prayed. Jesus, what did you pray when you snuck away before dawn in the dark of night? What words did you need to say? Did you sit in silence? Did you listen to your breath? Did you say your centering word? Or did you pour out your heart? Did you talk about all the pain you've encountered? Did you talk about all the need, the need for healing, the need for release? the need for wholeness, the need to be set free? Did you worry that you weren't enough, that all those lost and hurting people had so much they were dealing with and you couldn't fix it all? Jesus, what did you pray in that deserted place? Did you just need silence to remind yourself of what you were doing? Did you need to let go and release it all to God? Did you ask God to take some of the burden from you? Jesus, we have come to this lonely place. We have so many people we ask prayers for, family and friends who are sick, those who are making tough end-of-life decisions, those who are grieving, those who have been left behind, those who are anxious and depressed and lonely, we pray for the farmers in India seeking a fairer, more just world. Be with those who are hungry. Be with those searching for work. Jesus, we stop to pray for those on our hearts. Jesus, and then we prayed. We prayed the prayer you taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to grow, grab some donut, a cake, a cookie, a cracker, and something to drink, some grape juice, some wine, whatever you have, and bring them to the table, for here everyone is welcome and everyone is invited. So come, children of God, and be fed at the Lord's table. Come to receive what we need for the journey I've had. Come, children of God, and let us find the fuel for our faith. Come to the table to receive God's blessing and share it with others. At this table, at this table we remember the life and ministry of Jesus. At this table we remember what he has been called to do, what we have been called to do. At this sweet table we remember that Jesus invited people to come join him on the journey. And he invited the most unlikely people, those that you would normally invite into your journey. The people despised by others, the people looked down upon. And he invited him into the circle to be welcome at the table, to join him on the journey. We remember that at this table, the stories of Jesus and how he shared the word of God, how he entered into churches and spoke with the people. He'd open up the text of scripture and share what he saw within those verses and share about the dawning kingdom and share his knowledge of the Holy One of God. At this table, we remember how Jesus encountered people who were hurt and hurting. How Jesus encountered people who were in need of a healing touch. We remember at this table that Jesus brought healing and wholeness to the broken, the last, and the least, and the lost. And he invited them into the community, into the dawning kingdom of God. At this table... We remember. At this table, we remember that the last night that Jesus was with his friends here on earth. At that table, he gathered them around to celebrate a meal, to celebrate a high holy day, to remember the time that God had saved the people. And during that celebration, Jesus took bread. He lifted it up and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, This is the bread of heaven broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And then after they had finished their meal, he took a glass of wine, he lifted it up and he blessed it. And he said, This the cup of the new covenant. This is my love poured out from you, for you. Whenever you drink this, remember me. 
Let us pray. As you pour out your spirit on those gathered, you provide the bread and the cup from the simple gifts of creation, blessing them with your love. As we eat of the broken bread, may it bring us close to all. We are called to serve the hungry, the hurting, the cold, the oppressed. As we drink from the cup, may it, its grace raise us up to go out and become carers of the forgotten, workers of justice, builders of shelter. Amen. The bread of heaven, broken for you. Take and eat. cup of love poured out for you. Take and drink. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. May you be fed by the holy. May you take time away to pray. May you follow the holy wherever the love of God takes you. Amen. We're so glad you could join us for worship this morning. We hope that you have been touched by the holy and fed by God's word. If you would like to learn more about St. Paul's United Church of Christ Hinckley, please visit our website at stpaulshinkley.org. There you can make an online donation or you can mail us a check to St. Paul's United Church of Christ, P.O. Box 1271, Hinkley, Illinois, 60520. May you continue to be fed by the Holy. We are so thankful that you stopped and spent a moment with us and with the Holy.